I'm Lee Zeldin. You want to know something unique about me? I'm a conservative. In New York. Currently a major in the Army Reserves. Spent four years on active duty. Uh, I love this country. I love our flag. When I hear the Star Spangled Banner, when I we have Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts bringing the flags out, just I love it. I mean, I actually think about the, the, the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts who sent care packages over while we were deployed with cards from all over the country. They draw in pictures of a tank or a flag or an American soldier and they say thank you. 2006 was quite a year. It went from serving in Iraq to becoming a dad at home. My daughter's born 14 and a half weeks early. And now I just want a better life for, for them and their generation. That independent spirit of New Yorkers, the, uh, the grit, the, the fight, I will never forget where I came from. Long Island is a great place. I, I'm raising my family here. Hard work, integrity, there's a lot of values that I learned growing up on Long Island that uh, I need to keep in my mind and drive me each and every day on the job. Oh, you know, we have a great country. We have the greatest country in the entire world. And, and we are free and proud and have liberties because of the sacrifices of those who serve to protect and defend us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Lee Zeldin, New York State Senator. August 2006, Al-Tabi Village, Iraq. I'm looking at these brave, well-trained paratroopers to my left and my right, and being so very grateful for their sense of duty, their courage, their fearlessness, and their belief in a cause so much greater than themselves. We believe in the freedom upon which our nation was built, in our duty to stand up and protect it, our Constitution, and our liberties. Duty is but one of seven Army values we look to live with each and every day of our lives. The acronym is leadership. Loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. Personal courage can be demonstrated in so many different aspects of our life. Personal courage in combat is that teenager who sees his platoon sergeant trip and fall, exposed to enemy fire. So that teenager exposes himself. Platoon sergeant gets up, gets to safety, but that teenager is morally wounded. Personal courage can be demonstrated in health. My daughter is born 14 and a half weeks early. They were less than a pound and a half when they were born. They went through more in their first three and a half months of their life than I would ever wish upon anyone to go through in their entire lives. Personal courage in Congress is when we have leaders with the will to shrink our government and control our debt and our deficits. We have we have to stop the, the generational theft that is taking place right now and the mountains of fiscal obligations that our next generation is inheriting. It's having the personal courage to repeal Obamacare. I have never supported Obamacare and never will. Premiums are going up, deductibles are going up, people are losing their policies, they're losing their doctors. And those supporters of Obamacare are saying that we Republicans, we conservatives, don't have solutions. Well, I would encourage them to look at all of the bills that Republicans have filed in the House and the Senate. But of course, these Democrats who support Obamacare aren't going to read their own bills. So why would we expect them to read ours? Conservatives believe in affordability and accessibility. We just, we know that Obamacare is not the answer. And if you want to keep your doctor, you may have to change your congressman. Personal courage is about stopping Common Core. I believe in higher standards, but Common Core is not the answer. Personal courage is abolishing the IRS and reforming our tax code. Personal courage is loyally standing with our strongest allies in the world, like Israel, instead of trying to kiss the rings of leaders 
of countries who hate America. We need personal courage of elected officials who are willing to make tough decisions, even if it means they may lose their next election. Because what's more important than your pensions, your chairmanships, your parking spaces, your office spaces? What's more important than your re-election are the people who elected you to serve in the first place. Never forgetting, <laughs> never forgetting about the, the principles and values that the people who put their trust and their faith in you expect you to honor with integrity every day on the job. Fellow patriots, do you want to change Washington? We are not going to be able to make a difference unless we are able to convince our family and friends to stand up and fight for everything that br brings you here for this conference. We leave CPAC and return to our little corners of this very diverse country, inspired to elect new leaders with a stronger voice and a fresh perspective. We cannot change Washington unless we change some of the people we send there to represent us. I am very grateful of the American Conservative Union for this invitation to speak on the CPAC main stage. And I want to thank all of you for leading the fight to protect and defend our Constitution, our freedoms, and our liberties. We believe in America. We believe in the future of America, the need for more courage in government, the need for more principled leadership. Thank you for your patriotism and your convictions. God bless this nation that we all love, proudly serve, and call our home. Thank you and God bless you.